Welcome back, guys. Got another team preview. Uh, today we've got the mighty North Queensland Cowboys and uh, fortunate enough to have Nick. Nick from Australia, he's his page. And um, I believe I'll get him to say a bit more about his page. I believe you can find him on Instagram and he's got a YouTube channel, does a lot of videos, um, got a lot of um, fans I know of and always are doing the live videos and things like that with other um, co collab collaborations with the, um, uh, the pages and things like that, which is really good. So... Um, look, without further, I want to get to ask Nick, why, what, what made you become a Cowboys fan? Uh, and just tell us a little bit about your pages and where we can find you. Well, mate, thanks for uh, letting me on, first of all. Uh, that's very nice of you to let me on. Um, mate, when I was a kid, I didn't really have a team until probably 2007. And then um, in, in my town of Lismore, there used to be this shop at the shopping centre where it, had, it was just an NRL shop, basically. And I was looking at all these teams, and there was three teams in front of me. There was Melbourne, Manly, and the Cowboys. And the reason why I chose the Cowboys was, one, because I liked the logo. And the other reason was they didn't win a premiership at the time. And they were a team that was on the up. And mainly because of first and Matty Bowen back in, back in 2007 when they used to do like chip and chases all the time. And it was just entertaining to watch. So that's pretty much how I became the Cowboys fan, to be fair. One one of the best combos for mine um, the game has ever seen the Thurston and, and Bowen and to I agree to be honest they're one of the reasons I have a soft spot for the Cowboys so where, what about your page give us a little bit of a rundown of your page and, and what you do so I'm not not very consistent on Instagram I always do a lot of Instagram stories and Instagram lives with other rugby league content creators but mainly on YouTube at the moment Nick from Australia the YouTube channel is currently at. 1,100 subscribers. So the channel is doing very well at the moment. Um, I upload pretty much every day. You know, when the footy's on, I'm doing Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday football reviews. When the game ends, I'm doing a review straight away. So, you know, I like to do a lot of previews and reviews and connect with other, other people out there so we can, you know, grow, grow each other and just so everyone can get, get big, I guess. Yeah, I love to hear that. That's what I'm passionate about as well. But... To be honest, it's very hard work getting the YouTube and Instagram followers oh, yeah. up with being in the game now, and I can only take my hat off for you. I know it's um, probably been no doubt some hard hard work for you, but you, you are getting somewhere, and, and it's really good to see. Yeah. So anyone who likes this video, give me a, a like on YouTube as well, please. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, let, let's go into the 2021 season for the Cowboys, and I'll be honest, on the record, I honestly have no idea what's going to happen this year for him. I can see him doing well. I can see him doing bad. Um, hopefully after this chat, we've got a bit better of an understanding what they're going to do this year. We can help some people out. Who's your best signing yeah. for 2021? There wasn't too many. Um, who sticks well, out? <laughs> they didn't really sign anyone. I think that's, that, that, I bought Lachlan Bird from the Warriors, who isn't, with all due respect, isn't much of a great player yet. He could be, but not yet. And... I guess Todd Payton's the only real one that really makes sense. You know, he's obviously the new coach. You know, he was interim coach of the Warriors last year. You know, they had a pretty good run last year at the back end. And um, I'd have to say Todd Payton. Lachlan Bird might be okay for the bench, but they didn't really buy anyone. It's the same roster as last year, but everyone's got to remember, half the roster was injured last year. All the big names were out a lot. So now that they're all fully fit, I guess we'll see how they go. Last year was a bit of a write-off. Yeah, got to, got to agree with your thoughts there. I, I mentioned Todd Payton as well. I just think playing-wise, there's no real standouts. Like, as you said, I think Burr will get uh, 20, 30, 40 minutes off the bench, but I can't really put that down yeah, as the agreed. best signings. Um, I'll probably have to say Payton and just what he's been able to do with the Warriors. Um, now he's got some years yeah. to build and, and get the Cowboys to where he wants them to be. I think it's a really good uh, move for the club uh, moving forward. What about your biggest loss? There was a couple of players that have either left or retired. Um, who's one that point, uh, stands out for you? Oh, biggest loss. I mean, Gavin Cooper, maybe, for experience-wise. I think his leadership is going to be what's missed a lot. You know, he was, you know, one of those experienced players where, you know, if, if you're down by six or eight, you know, you turn to him and, you know, he tells you how to do your job. So, I'd have to say Gavin Cooper, even though I thought he was – Pretty ordinary last year. He didn't do a whole lot at the back end of his career. But for leadership-wise, I thought he did an okay job. But um, I have to say Gavin Cooper. There wasn't a lot of players that were big losses going off after last year. But I have to say, I have to say Gavin Cooper. Yeah, I 100% agree um, with that. Just more so with his leadership. 
Um, I think last year, it's fair to say, most of your players fell away a little bit and he was one of them as well. But um, we've known over time how good he was as a second rower and just the holes he could run, especially I can't forget his combination with Thurston, which was right up there with, oh, a, yeah. with a forward and a, and a playmaker's combination over the years. And he could just, they could both create something out of nothing. And I'm a Parramatta fan. I remember that night at um, Paris Stadium when him and Thurston just... Oh. Tore us apart. We thought we'd we do a home, and it was just about how by how many, and they decided to click their fingers, and and it was all over with. So, what about what about a key reason for success? What's something you can look at and you go, you know what? This is the reason why we're going to do so well this year. Well, I'll say the attack. You know, there was a lot of question marks last year on the Cowboys' defense, but I got to say, the attack was all right. That they were scoring a lot of games with us scoring twenty plus points a game. You know, I remember the game against the Warriors where they scored. 26, there was a game against the Tigers. We're like getting flogged and they scored like 22 in that game as well. They scored 22 against Melbourne, 16 against the Roosters. So, I mean, the Cowboys attack's not an issue in my opinion. I think it's the defence. But I'd say if I can continue to score points, and especially with Michael Morgan coming back fully fit, ready to go, and you, you, you got to have a good players there like Val Holmes, the Hammer, Kyle Felt, a lot of attacking threats there. So, I'd have to say the attack would be the thing that Gets me a bit, bit excited this year, I'd say. Yeah, if, if it can click for the Cowboys, they've definitely got the players there to to really be an attacking force. And that's the Cowboys of all that we've always known, that they have can always score 24, 30 points with ease. And um, it'd be good to see that sort of, that come back into the Cowboys line. I mentioned, uh, I already did mention him, but I mentioned Todd Payton's, just his effect. Um He's yeah, obviously yeah. got something that he can do. He's got some magic wand that he was able to do with the Warriors last year. And he's now got a few years to really build, get the players in that he wants um, around the club. Uh, he's obviously seen enough there at the moment to suggest he's happy with it. Um, I'm sure that there will be some signings um, for next year. Um, I think it's a patience thing. Give him a couple of years to really build this team up. Um, and I think he's going to be really doing some really great things. What about what about your biggest concern? I mentioned earlier there's it's so hard to get a read on this team. It's the hardest team for mine yeah. this year to, to read on. What's something that you look at and you go, I'm a bit concerned because of this? Well, there's a couple of things that I'm concerned about. I think the back row is an issue. Obviously, they haven't got a great back row. Cohen Hess, fine play on his day, but so inconsistent. They've got a couple of youngsters there in Mitch Dunn and Tom Gilbert, but, you know... They don't even have a top 10 back row in their side. So I'll say the back row would be the biggest concern. There's a few question marks on the centre position. But, you know, if, if Isan Masters pulls his finger out, he might go OK. But I just worry about the back row. Maybe the 5 eight position. I know Michael Morgan's playing there this weekend. But I don't know if Jay Clifford or Scott Drinkwater, I don't know if any of them are the right fit for Morgan. I know Jay Clifford's going to the Knights next year. So, you know... I'm not a big fan of players signing contracts for the next year, but playing with the team that they're still at for this year. So I think uh, I'd say the back row is the biggest concern and maybe the halves with Morgo. I don't know if they have the right halves partner to complement him well enough. Yeah, a couple of very good points you make there. I've mentioned as well just the, the niggle injuries that are starting to happen with the club. Um, you've mentioned already yeah. last year there was a few injuries, and I think especially with some older players, once they start to get these niggles, it's really hard for them to automatically just have them go away. They, if anything, they actually yeah. continue on and it does become a bit of an issue. Um, I'm hoping they don't because I love Michael, uh, Michael Morgan for one of them. Um, I know Val Holmes, yeah. we haven't seen the best of him yet since he's got back, but he can. he's a freak. He, he's very, very quick. And I just feel like some of these players, I hope it doesn't happen to. But for mine, it is well, a bit I've of a say, I've got to say with Michael Morgan... Love him. One of my favourite players that's ever, ever put on the Cowboys jersey. But if he keeps getting injuries, he's going to be a 2.0 version of Kieran Foran. Injuries. Injuries are going to hurt him. So he needs to try and just get his shoulders right. I know this weekend he's up against Viliami Kickout, which, I mean, to be honest, with the Panthers-Cowboys game on Saturday, um, that Panthers left there just giving me nightmares. So, <laughs> you know, hopefully his shoulders are good, ready to go because... When you have kick out running run at you for 80 minutes, it's not, not going to be fun. So I hope your shoulders are all good now. Yeah, and it's a good point because the other thing about this is with injured players and you don't want to make people like Morgan, you don't want to give him the tap on the shoulder, but it's about recruitment. It's about having your salary cap in order. And if he continues mm -hmm. to miss X amount of games each year, you'd probably end up thinking, 
Well, look, I don't know if Clifford was part of the, the future of the club or what their wraps were on him, but you could have kept him um, if you did yeah. have Morgan out for another year and it starts to become too much. You just don't know. So those are things as a club they've got to look at. Um, that's just, yeah, an area for mine of a concern, just this moving forward. I hope it's all they all stay fit. If they stay fit, I think it's going to be a better year for the Cowboys than last year. What's your final thoughts on your club and where do you see them finishing? Well, I know we've said a few negative things about them. And to be fair, there are a lot of negatives and positives about the Cowboys this year. I mean, the, I, I guess a good thing about them is they've got nine of the first 12 in, in Queensland. So not all in Townsville, but, you know, they're playing Magic Grand up in Brisbane, Sunshine Coast. I think if they can stay injury-free and if they can be a consistent side, learn learn to um, win on the road and just, just build some mental toughness, I think, They'll be around those sides between 7th and 11th. I've got him in 8th. I think they can make the 8th. But, again, the back rows are concerned. They'll have a few issues. But, you know, the teams around them have also have a lot of issues as well. So, I've got him 8th. But, but I could easily see him lower than 8th. But I think, um, like I said before, you know, if Michael Morgan stays fit, Tamalolo, Holmes, if, if, if those three players stay fit, they should be around the top 8. But comes down to mental toughness and consistency. So I've got them coming eighth, but I could easily see them lower. So they're hard to read on, I reckon. They're pretty hard to get a read on. I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks that. Uh, I honestly can see them finishing anywhere between, say, eighth all the way down to probably 15th. That's the worry for mine is that yeah, I still am just, I, I am undecided for mine after this chat. It seems like there is a bit of pressure on probably two or three individuals to make sure they stay on the park as much as possible. Um, Morgan, yeah. just because of his leadership, he knows how to control a game. We've seen that. Al Holmes with his skill. Obviously, you want um, Tom Lolo staying on as much as he can with his go forward, and the team really goes off the back of him. So if those three players can stay fit and play most of the games, or majority of them, um, with Origin obviously included with this this year, um, I can see him doing a lot better than um, down the bottom. They'll be up towards the eight. Um, yeah. I just hope, yeah, we get to see some really attacking football from the Cowboys this year. Well, what I will say as well, too, which I think a lot, a lot of people don't actually remember this, Morgan, Tamalolo and Holmes, they're all on $1 million a season. They're all on big money. They, I mean, if, if you're paying a halfback, a fullback or a winger, whatever you want to call Val Holmes, and you got probably the best forward in the game when he's fully fit in Tamalolo, all a million dollars each, you should be competing for the top eight and doing well. So, you know, a lot of people this year, including myself, are calling the Cowboys pretty underrated. But if they continue to fail and not make the finals, then they're going to get caught overrated. You know, Jordan McLean, he hasn't fought a shot since he left Melbourne. Maguire is supposed to be a good signing, but he's just been very um, on and off as well. And I guess Scott Drinkwater, we all thought he was going to be a, going to be a great buy. But last year, I thought he was, I thought he was pretty ordinary last year in defence. But... You know, in the tackle, it was all right. So, I feel like there's a lot of players there that are on a lot of money. I think Cohen is on 700000 a season as well. So, all these players that are under pressure, they need to perform because, you know, the fans up in Townsville, they're sick of they're sick of failures. They, they're sick of the Jonathan Thurston, um, I guess you could say Jonathan Thurston aftermath since he retired. But no excuses. We all saw what Morgan did in 2017 in that final series. So, you know, they should be doing better than what they are. And this 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 has to be the year they improve or or it's going to be some players are going to have to get the tap on the shoulder to move on. Yeah, and the other thing to mention is obviously the new stadium. Didn't get to have many games there last year with the crowds, um, obviously yeah. with the whole COVID thing. But you don't want to have two years in a row after having a new stadium where they're, they're poorer years and you want to give the fans reasons to turn up, be successful, and it's no... No doubting that teams do come off their, um, they feed off their home crowd. If the, the Townsville faithful are, are turning up to games, I've got no doubt the Cowboys go to another level. I want to ask you one last question before we leave. It's off the cuff. Yeah. Um, let's say, for instance, let's say the Cowboys don't do well this year. They finish, let's say, 15th. How, how many yeah. years would you give Peyton? How, does he have this year as a, free, as a freebie? Um, can he build or is there pressure from the start? Well, see, for me, because the Cowboys from 2011 to 2017, they were in the finals every year. So for me, you know, they missed the finals the last three years. And a stat, a, stat that, a stat that no one really knows, the last time the Cowboys missed the finals three years straight was 08-09-2010. 
I might have the finals the next year. I finished seventh. So, you know, for the Cowboys, I think if they miss the finals this year, Todd Payton needs to blow the club up, rebuild it, start over again because you can't be having players like Maguire, Morgan, Tamalolo, Holmes, Felt, you know, all these sort of players just not making finals for the fourth year in a row. So if the Cowboys finish lower than 11th, I say blow the club up and rebuild it like what the, like what Nathan Brown did for the Knights, just rebuild this whole club, restart it. So, you know, I'm getting impatient because I know the Cowboys are a team that should be around the eight every year, but the last three years has been nothing but failure. So I want to see success. And obviously, you said before about the stadium, you know, they should be winning games out. I think last year, the best one, best game they won there was against a struggling Dragon side in Golden Point. I mean, not not being rude to the Dragons, but you should be beating the Dragons up there without going to Golden Point. So, um, they, if, if they finish lower than 11th, I, I, I say blow it up and start again. Mate, I've got to agree with everything you've said. Um, I asked at the start to try and help me out with, with choosing where they're going to finish. I don't think it's gotten any easier. <laughs> There's still for mine up uh, in the air. But, um, look, I really appreciate it. I hope the Cowboys do have a good year. I hope these star players stay on the field more than they're off it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hopefully Morgan coming back to to the, his best football, which if he can produce, he's one of the best in the, in the competition. So, Nick, if you haven't already, give him a like um, on Insta and, and follow his YouTube channels. But, Nick, cheers for coming on. Mate, thanks for... Thanks for having me on, mate. Really do appreciate it. No worries. Thank you.